G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. I do hope you're super well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this, the Per Gear 512 gigabyte CF Express Type B card. Wow, epic. So let's talk about it. Where did it all start for me? They're going to be a bit small, but it started with the XQD cards, which I got my first one with the Nikon D4. It was 16 gigabytes. And then came these. I purchased this one one year ago. The CF Express standard had been around a little while, but this was one of the very first cards to come out. So I've been using this one for a year. These Sony XQD cards, I've been using like I said, since the D4, but I've been using them a lot since the D850. Four years ago, 2017, I purchased these 128 ones. They have served me very well. You may have seen my video, 600 Days Without Incident, talking about the fact that all of my CFX Express cards have not had any problems in that 600 days, and now we're probably up to something like 800 days. And that video was talking about since the Z7 launched, but really I can go back at least four years and it's that long without incident. Anyway, now let's talk about the variants of CF Express. There is Type A, which exists in the world, and there is also Type C, which is, uh, it's been ratified, it's a standard, but I don't believe they have been released at this point in time. So we only have the two. Now, to the best of my understanding, Sony at the moment are the only people that use the Type A variant. They are used in the A7S III and used in the new A1. Fantastic, something that they've done that's pretty cool is the, the Type A is very similar in size to SD cards. So what that means is you can make a slot that will take both SD and CF Express Type A. So what Sony have done is you've got two slots, dual cards, which will either take two SDs, an SD and a CFX Type-A, or um, swap it around and you have a CF Express Type-A and an SD. So you've got permutations, you've got options. It's pretty fantastic. The only downsides I can see at the moment is, I think Sony are the only people that are making cards and they are hard to come by and they're pretty expensive. They're the downsides. Otherwise, I think it's a pretty good setup. Oh, also they're a little bit slower, but they're still, I think they're still around a gigabyte transfer per second, around that sort of speed. I'm not sure it really matters, uh, especially when we're talking 8K, because clearly the Sony, the new Sony A1 is shooting 8K and it must be shooting 8K to that card. So. It's kind of moot at this point, and really your biggest concerns would be price and availability and the fact that there's only one manufacturer. It's always better to have more than one manufacturer. And we did face this with CF uh, Express Type B in the beginning, that there was only one manufacturer, and it took quite a long time before there was some consistent multiple manufacturers. Some did come and go, but I'm not sure whether they stayed in the market because the market was pretty small. Anyway, we're here to talk about the Per Gear. Yes, so firstly, let's get it out of the box. Uh, nice wooden box, by the way. Not sure I've ever had a uh, memory card come in a wooden box. That's cool. Have you? Let me know in the comments. All right, well, on first viewing, it Looks like every other CF Express Type B card. That's cool, because it's got to go in the slot, doesn't it? It's got to, got to work and got to fit. Now, this is not really a review. It kind of can't be, because uh, besides it meeting its speed requirements, which I'm pretty confident it will, or this, market, this product would not survive in the market, the only other real test we can do is robustness, and it you know, seems to meet those. Uh, meet those specifications at this point in time. And then of course, it's longevity. Per gear, give this a five year warranty. So you, you, you can feel pretty confident about it. Of course, a warranty is no good if you lose your data. So the reality is, the only thing that I can do is put this in my real world life, cycle it around like I cycle my other four or five cards, 
and just keep using it. So we're gonna to have to talk about this card. Ask me in the comments every three to six months, how's that card going? Is it behaving? Is everything right? I think that's kind of the only way we can do it. I'm not gonna do accelerated testing. I'm not gonna take like a million frames on my Nikon Z6 and uh, you know see how it goes. I, I don't think that necessarily would, would help either. Doesn't really help five years past. So let's just get this happening in the real world, shall we? Yes, let's do that. What we can do is throw it into the beautiful, the lovely, the gorgeous Z6 II with its outstanding XQD and CF Express Type B slots sitting there next to its high speed SD slot. Let's throw that in there and give it a little whirl. And of course, not only is this the beautiful Z6 II with the gorgeous 14 to 24 2.8 sitting here. Can't wait to review those for you very soon. Anyway. Enough of the silly voice, let's format it. That's probably the biggest test, number one, is to format this card, is it not? We're off to a good start. Shall we take, let's live the dream. Let's take a photo. Okay, here we go. We're at 4, we're at 24 mil on, at, at 2.8, 15th of a second. I've got a photo and it's appeared on the screen. Let's shoot a little bit of video. The card is working. Okay. Card works, we are off to an extraordinarily good start when testing out a new card. Look, that's all we can really do right now is just use it in the real world. I'm gonna use this camera on every single thing that I do for this channel, and we're gonna test it out. So there it is, that's it. Let me read uh, a couple of quick specifications. They state here on their website, this uh, the 1600 megabyte stable stream speed for photos, raw videos, 4K to 8K. So it is designed to handle 8K. Pretty exciting, isn't it? That's pretty exciting. Uh, it has protection against shock, magnetic temperature extremes, and X-ray, as well as being, it says right here, a rock solid build, reassuring stability and reliability. Love that. Stable transfer speed up to 1600 megabytes read speed and 1200 megabytes write speed. Cameras that are supported. Z6, Z62, Z7, Z72, D6, interestingly not the D5. Does the D5 not do you see? Yeah, well, maybe they, they haven't made them back, backwardly compatible for the D850 and so on. Not yet. Maybe they haven't tested them. Maybe they don't see the point. I don't know. Uh, the Canon C500 Mark II, the Canon C300 Mark III, the 1DX Mark III, the EOS R5, of course, and the Panasonic S1 and S1R. That's 11 cameras. And I, th I think there's some Sony cameras that take CF Express Type B, but... Um, I'm not sure what's happening there. The five year warranty, as I have mentioned. It can work in temperatures zero to 70 degrees. Good to know. Doesn't get that hot here. 46 degrees Celsius is about as hot as it gets here, which I don't know what that is, 112 F, something like that. This card, I think what's exciting about this card is it's 329 US dollars. How good is that? So, uh, you know, it's brand new, that's the launch price, but I think that price maybe within six months will be sub $300. I think that's a lot of bang for your buck. I mean, I just think they're squeezing so much into these tiny form factors. And if you think about SSD drives, you know, we can see, this is just a quick aside, but how, how big this is relevant re relative to an SSD. And you, you can fit about eight in that footprint, twice as thick, these go up to two terabytes, I think. They will be when anyone decides to make one, which that's basically uh, eight times two is 16 times two is 32. So 32 terabytes in a form factor is basically possible. Come on, Samsung, get some bigger ones out. I want some bigger ones. I need them for storage and they're faster and everything. I know you want to slowly dole them out and charge us a fortune, but anyway. Storage, amazing. Now, just from, from my perspective, this is four times larger than the largest card I've ever had. I've had 128 gigabyte cards and they have been amazing. They pretty much, it's pretty rare for me to go over 128 when shooting with something like the Z7 or a D850. It does happen, but rarely. So, does this change how we think about our data? Do we just keep going or do we download? I'm not sure, but clearly these cards are made for 8K video and 8K video will fill this card up quite quickly. 
So I think they can handle it. But of course, data backup is critical. So if you do get a card this size, maybe don't just wait to fill it. Because if it's just like a Z6, um, well, why don't we have a look? So I'm shooting RAW and RAW and JPEG. Uh, can anyone guess how many files are going to fit on this card? It's saying 7,700 and those are usually overestimates. So 8,000 files. I don't shoot that much in a day. I'm usually shooting multiple cameras, like at least two. And that, so I will, and I, and I tend to, like the maximum I tend to get in a day is something like 4,000 images if it's a commercial shoot or back when I used to do weddings. So that would be 2,000 on each camera. So this is exceeding that by a factor of four. It's amazing. Anyway, it's something to think about how you would handle your data and whether you would fill it up. The only time that I could see myself filling this and not downloading it, even so I tend to take a laptop with me, is when I travel. That's the only time I can see that happening. And gosh golly, isn't that a lot of images. As I said, I'm gonna test it out in the real world so we can feel safe and secure about it. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. The last thing I wanna mention here is uh, Per Gear sent this to me and said, test it out, make the review that you wanna make. No money has changed hands. That's all that's happening. And they've also given me the opportunity to have an affiliate link with their website. Now. I do get a very small amount from any purchases that are made. But I don't want you to buy this card if you don't want to, and I don't want you to buy this card from this link if you don't want to. That's completely cool from my perspective. I've never done affiliate links before. I'm just trying to learn how they work, what they do, what the expectations are. But just letting you know that there's a link down below if it's relevant to you. No pressure at all. I'd love to hear any questions that you have about CF Express, the different cards I've had, how it's all been working in my world. As I said, I've had 600 days without incident on the Z6 and Z7 with CF Express cards. I think that's now probably more like 800 days, maybe even 900, no, not 900, more like 800. Pretty awesome, they just keep cruising along. You just look after them, they look after you. Whether you've got two slots or one slot, they still work and look after you. So love any questions or thoughts, or please share your experience with CF Express and XQD. How has it worked for you? Love to hear your thoughts. So good to see you. If this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So do please subscribe. Please share. It does make us all smarter. And do like because it really helps me and the video go out to a wider audience. Now, uh, if you'd like to see more, you can right now. There's almost 300 episodes just there. And you can click on them and watch them now. All right, I'm going to go. Enough talk. Uh, next. I've got the Z7 II uh, coming up review because I've got to send that camera back to Nikon very soon. Uh, I've got Z Z6 II, 14 to 24, the two times teleconverter, the Viltrox, so much stuff. I'm super busy, but my schedule, my timetable is clear now. As of today, as of tomorrow, I'm going to be out there shooting and getting more great content for reviews and more great images. I like to do the two things at once, capture my normal photography and do reviews at the same time. Kind of feels right, doesn't it? All right, see you soon.